All right, buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Aurora Brockman, and I am the director of Club Quarantine. You guys, thank you so much for coming to Club Quarantine. Club Quarantine is a virtual queer nightclub that exists on Zoom. It began like the first week of the COVID-19 lockdown in 2020 in Toronto. I was in grad school at the time at Stanford. I was listening to this podcast about how queer people were sort of coping with the pandemic and I heard about club quarantine. You just see pages and pages of boxes of people dancing, twerking, drag queens, lots and lots of drugs, people making out, but then also people just sort of like living their lives. It sort of felt like the full spectrum of the human experience taking place in every night. DJs who would probably be playing freaky queer nightclubs in the real world, they would book in club quarantine. I loved the aesthetic, the gritty texture, all of the different interesting elements of this sort of virtual world. I attended every single night for two months and I recorded everything I saw. I just became obsessive. 216 hours of club quarantine footage. Can you really make an entire film only out of this? How is there gonna be a narrative that's gonna progress? How long can you really watch someone twerking? <laughs> I doubted the concept for a long time. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk to me. I'm making a short documentary about club quarantine. I tried to pick people that felt like archetypes of club quarantine. Do you put on makeup or like what is your routine? Put on makeup, jewelry, get into a dress and decide which background I'm gonna use. That is such an awesome tool to have. <laughs> they would record themselves getting ready for the parties and then after the party. I had so many beautiful conversations with people. I made a lot of really amazing <laughs> friendships. I became a regular. I would get dressed up and I would actually get out of my chair and be dancing. It was like seeing your friends. I hope you guys are having fun. You guys are amazing. Yes. I think people were looking for a sense of community. There's sort of like a historical precedent of queer people seeking refuge in the space of nightlife and in clubs. I love what you said about every month being Black History Month. Baby, congrats. A lot of people of color come to Club Quarantine. After the death of George Floyd, things changed. Everything became a lot darker and sort of more sinister. And I wanted the film not only to have like the feeling of the progression of an evening, but also sort of the progression of the grief that wasn't just about COVID, but was also about what the community was experiencing, especially the black and brown people who were part of the community. Mostly queer people come to Club Quarantine, and I think that those sorts of people heavily overlap with the people who are becoming very engaged in the protesting that was happening. It became a space for people to sort of commiserate afterwards. I'm queer, um, I guess that's how I would identify as just as queer, but I was not out when I made Club Quarantine. But when it got picked up by the New York Times, and they specifically asked me what my relationship to the community was and to queer nightlife. Five minutes before it was released, I called my parents. And I was like, hey guys, you know Club Quarantine's coming out today. I'm gonna tell you that I identify as being a part of that community. And one of the most awkward conversations I've ever had. Club Quarantine was not just my movie, but it was also my coming out story. I do think that that was like a really precious time in a weird, weird, weird way. About two months ago, I actually went to one in New York. It was crazy. I met Brad. They both do virtual parties. They're like doing like tour around the US and Canada, doing the parties in person and allowing the people who had really found community through it to finally meet in real life and connect. Thank you so much, guys. Oh, my God.